falls again at the Denver Post. 30 journalists are being laid off there. Just the latest blow to a newsroom that has shed three quarters of its journalists since 2011. And the company that owns the Post, Digital First Media, owns a number of papers from coast to coast, and they have made dramatic cuts at virtually every single one of them. So let's navigate through why this might be happening. Denver 7's Jason Grenauer takes us 360 on what this means and why you should care. We know that you want journalism that's factual and above all, that's accurate. Our own TV news research has told us that, but in the era of fake news, how do you balance that with the most recent news of major cuts to the largest newspaper in our state? So let's go 360 and start with the facts. The Post is cutting 30 jobs from their newsroom. Those jobs are to be determined, but it will drop their numbers from near 100 to about 70. They are our news gathering partners here at Denver 7, so let's start with why this happened. The revenue streams for newspapers, for regional newspapers and all sorts of regional uh, media outlets just haven't quite caught up um, with the cost of doing business. Simply put, the traditional print newspaper remains a struggle to be profitable in a 24-7 online news environment. And digital platforms, they need to be populated with new information constantly. Some of the why is because users are not paying for information. Most news websites and apps, they give away their stories for free. The Post recently added a paywall to their website and reported increased online traffic. The Wall Street Journal did something similar at a relatively high cost and readership has continued to grow for them. But it is a struggle industry wide. Even here at Denver 7, we use commercials to help pay for the news you see every day. But that remains a tough market too for sales. The brunt really, though, has come down on newspapers and legacy institutions like the Denver Post. The newspaper union sees this not just as a loss of jobs, but also a loss for community journalism. Their capacity to cover the news that needs to be covered is going to be diminished by 30 percent from the low capacity they already had. And they say it comes down to you, the community. Will school boards go uncovered? Will city councils go uncovered? Um, will shady business deals go uncovered? Let's take a reality check. Prior to 2009, there were two papers and about 500 print journalists in Denver. After these layoffs, there'll be about 70. No matter how many people are in here, um, our mission stays the same and our commitment to doing quality work stands the same. And let's bring it back to that fake news point. The Colorado Press Association CEO tells me it's more important than ever to have more journalists, not less. So is this actually going to impact how much truth people will get? As we diminish the news staff, we're dimish, diminishing that grounding effect of the objective news provided by the daily newspaper. There's no better, um, I guess, um, vaccine <laughs> against fake news than making sure that the real news is out where people, people can find it. Can that still happen given the restraints of what you're having to go through? It absolutely will happen. It will happen. That is... Uh... That does hurt. Jason's uh, in the studio, so what's next? Well, simply put, the Post told me today that you're still going to get your paper. There aren't any plans to scale it down, at least size-wise. The Press Association said, though, this is definitely a challenge, and it has continued to get harder over the last few years. But our industry is transforming, and that comes with opportunities. One thing, though, that hasn't changed, journalists in this state will keep working hard to provide true, real news that is important and impactful to you, just like we do each and every day. Present company included, mm -hmm. and it's never been more important. Thank you for that. Yeah. Jason Grinauer tonight.